Hey guys, Shaw here, and today we are going to be diving into Halls of Atonement to take a look at the second and arguably the hardest boss of this instance, Echelon. This video was in no way, shape, or form planned, even in the slightest. With Shadowlands being now 18 months old, I figured that most players had a pretty good handle on basic boss mechanics, but then I decided to plug Halls of Atonement on Tyrannical Week, and that all changed. With the Valor Cap being removed, I've just been spending a lot of time catching up with some of my alternate tanks to get them ready for pushing higher keys. And once I started wiping over and over and over again to Echelon, I knew that I had to make a video to help the 10 people who watch my channel. Side note, hi mom. So, here we are, going over the general strategy for this boss. We're going to be discussing mechanics, strategy, tips and tricks, followed by an analysis of a 24 Tyrannical that my group ran a few weeks back. Let's dive in. On paper, this boss seems quite simple. Echelon only has four main abilities, including Blood Torrent. This is a void zone created by the boss that targets a player. The initial hit will do a large amount of damage to any player caught in it, and then it'll, it's going to leave a pool that does moderate damage per second to any player sitting within the area of effect. Then you have Stone Call, which is going to summon six adds, three on either side of the room, the north and south side. These will immediately run at the tank unless provoked otherwise by damage or healing aggro. Once they are defeated, they will become invulnerable, and then they will return to 100% health after 30 seconds. Curse of Stone is then going to be applied when the boss reaches 100 energy, and it's going to apply to every one of your party members. Over the course of 5 seconds, players afflicted will be slowed and then stunned when the debuff expires. Make sure you decurse this. Mage, Druids, Shamans all have access to a decurse. Then lastly, you have Stone Shattering Leap. This will target a player at the same time Curse of Stone is applied, Upon the cast finishing, Echelon will leap onto the target, shattering all enemies and players. Adds that are invulnerable will be removed from the fight upon being shattered by this mechanic. With these out of the way, let's quickly go over how the fight should work in theory. But before we talk about strat, I think it's important to understand the timings of the boss. So here are some tips. Adds will spawn once per cycle, which is roughly every 45 to 50 seconds. This can easily get delayed by boss spell queuing, which happens naturally throughout the fight. Echelon also casts Curse of Stone upon hitting 100 energy. A general rule of thumb is to be able to kill the adds before the curse is applied. This is done by saving offensive CDs for adds. In higher keys, it's smart for groups to not to overcommit. I'll talk about this more in my analysis here in a few minutes. Blood Torrent will typically be casted once or twice per cycle, depending on at what point of the fight you're in. Because this mechanic targets players, you can actually bait this to certain locations in the room. A common strategy for a lot of higher end groups is going to be placing new blood torrent pools next to old blood torrent pools. The cleaner this is, the easier the boss becomes because all adds can be hit by melee players and players then know that they're going to be safe running into melee during the stone shattering leap. Curse of Stone should always be dispelled. Like I mentioned before, this can be done by druids, mages, and shamans. The reason you want to dispel is because you want to make sure that the players targeted by stone shattering leap can avoid the damage or react with the defensive. You also want to make sure you're able to continue damaging the boss, so the less players that are stunned, the better. There is a small tip with the Kyrian file, so Kyrian players can actually remove the curse once per fight, so feel free to use this if you want to avoid taking the damage. The Clea Soulbind, more specifically, can also help remove the debuff from other players, but it's a little bit more RNG and takes planning. And then of course, immunities also work. Another side note when it comes to immunities is that the Shattering Leap damage is actually magical despite it seeming like a physical debuff, so Blessing of Protection and Evasion won't work as, as an immunity. Lastly, you need 70% increased movement speed in order to avoid the leap. There are a ton of different ways to avoid this mechanic, but I don't think I have time to go through every single class and spec, but what I'll do is I'm going to leave on screen now while I continue reading this part of the script. I have... I may have missed some of the more niche things classes can do, but keep in mind that I'm an idiot, uh, and I also don't play every spec in the game. Feel free to pause the video, and while you do that, why don't you leave a like on the video? God, this is cheesy. Uh, also, leave a comment like, man, this, this guy's got spunk, or uh, s something like that. All right, you done yet? Awesome, moving on. All right, so with all the little nuances out of the way, let's talk about how the rotation of the boss works. Upon interacting with the door, the boss will knock the player who engaged backwards, and then the encounter will begin. The tank should position the boss near the center of the room, and the melee should stack close to bait the first blood torrent. At the same time, you'll want your range and healer to put themselves in a position to bait the blood torrent out of the way of the fight. Also, so they don't engage with adds until they reach the boss. Shortly into the fight, the boss will spawn the first set of adds. 
Typically, groups will have Lust rolling along with the Ur buff to carry this first set. When the adds are defeated, it pulses AoE damage. The boss will then apply Curse of Stone to all members of your party and subsequently target one of the players with Stone Shattering Leap. This is the player that needs to be decursed as a priority and make their way to the invulnerable adds wherever they are in the room. Once this cast finishes, that player will try to want to try to avoid getting hit as well as the rest of the players. And that's where that list that was on screen a few minutes ago is very, very, very important. The group after this will want to reset by positioning themselves next to old blood torrent pools. In higher keys, it's important to make sure you have an offensive CD up for each ad set and a defensive CD up for each leap. Ad sets happen every 45 seconds, like I mentioned earlier, following the first set, like I stated previously. With Ur and a standard class CD being 1, 2, and 3 minutes, it's common to find that the third set of ads is going to be the most difficult because most classes will be dry on CDs, so I recommend having a rotation. What I mean by this is having one of your DPS players hold on to CDs for a few for a few seconds so you have something rolling when ads come out. Besides that, keep the room clean, kill ads, decurse, and your group should be successful. So let's jump into a 24 analysis and walk through the fight step by step. All right, so a few quick things. This wasn't perfect. So some of our blood torrent bait, uh, I can't say that word. Some of our blood torrent baiting wasn't super clean. We also had two deaths on this fight. Uh, one was just, I think it, I don't want to like blame anyone, but I think it was our healer didn't have a sufficient amount of hots and wasn't ready for the damage because what we did do really well in this fight is every ad set just got obliterated. So we're going to look into that in a second. And I'm going to point out some of the kind of like small tips to this. So this was a 24 tyrannical. This is a few weeks back. So this was our bursting volcanic week in the first rotation. Uh, one of our cleaner halls runs, but we're just going to jump right in. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start in. So we, we did a general kind of a standard whoa skip. We're going to crack open the door. Echelon's going to appear. I'm going to taunt him, get him to the center of the room, and then we're going to focus down Ur Relic. The reason we want Ur Relic is because it gives us cooldown resets, or not resets, but it gives us basically 30 seconds off of our cooldowns, both uh, defensive cooldowns as well as offensive cooldowns. Almost immediately into the fight, we are six seconds in. He's going to cast his first Blood Torrent. Again, this will be targeted at players. So you can see that we have our Hunter kind of over on the right-hand side of the room, and we have our Lock in this far back corner on the left side, or as you enter, it's flipped. So the reason that they're baiting it out here or to the side is because we want to try to keep the center the I shouldn't say the center of the room clean but you either want you don't want to have like pools kind of all over the place essentially you want blood torrent pools you want kind of like either grouped up in melee or you want them as far to the edge of the room as possible because you're not going to be utilizing the edge of the room as much also players who are baiting towards the outside need to be careful not to tag ads once they spawn because if an ad gets tagged they're not going to run in which makes it harder to get them in because then you need to like kick those ads and uh, they're going to start just like shooting bolts at players and at and start mailing and whatnot so you want to make sure you're not touching the ads when they spawn you have to be careful of auras like I've seen a lot of like boomkins star falling when the ads come out and then they all run at the boomkin uh, the healer should also try to move in towards melee because you're going to get the healing threat those are kind of like the basic rules so blood torrent comes out and then following this, we're going to get our stone call. Now, what's really scary about this first overlap, though, is that you still have Ur up. So players in melee need to pay attention. So this is the only stone fiend that kind of stayed out. So I'm going to target it here, get a kick on it, and then it should come in nice and nice and neat. So there's that Ur slam, as well as the adds bursting, and then the curse comes out all at the same time because the boss hit 100 energy. So luckily, we have two curse dispels and we have one Kyrian. Or two Kyrian, sorry. So we're pretty decent on curses. So the priority is that the healer will most likely always get the player, at least in our group. Our healer is the one who always will dispel the Curse of Stone on the player with the Stone Shattering Leap. And I will typically either decurse myself if I have Incarnation up, because Incarnation is a really powerful cooldown. Or if I see, for example, like True Shot is rolling. Or if our lock needs you know, time to set up his tyrant for the next uh just his next tyrant i will kind of adapt my curse to whichever player needs it so here i end up decursing myself i don't have incarn up but i just i think i got lazy and then we dispel our warrior and then what he did there it's kind of hard to see because it went really fast 
is that he moved into melee as soon as the Urslam finished. The... Oh, we still have Woe Buff as well. So if you have Woe Buff, you can actually just run out of the cast. You don't have to use Heroic Leap. But what he does is he uses Heroic Leap. As soon as the cast finishes and the boss is in the air, he's Heroic Leaping out towards where I am. And then following this, we're going to make sure that the Dismantler dies. Er. And then we're going to continue on with the rest of the fight. It should be a little bit easier. We're going to get cooldown recovery for obviously offensive CDs as well as defensive CDs, which is going to be really beneficial. So this, this stone call in DBM is actually fake. So it's blood torrent, curse of stone again, and then a leap. So the first set of adds, I've always found this to be the case, is that he typically will do two leaps on the first set, but then after that you have to be very clean because you only get one leap per ad set. So once again, he does the same thing. He baits it just to where nobody is. Our, our healer's out here. Our, our lock is way in the back. Our hunter's over here by me. Um, he's baiting the leap just exactly where the boss was, and then he's leaping out. And then this is when the next ad set will spawn. We want to make sure that like the lock is over here positioned so he's not cleaving onto anything until they're on top of the boss. They're all going to stack up fairly nicely. We're going to get some kicks on the range adds, and then we are just going to obliterate them. So pretty easy. And then what I'm doing here is I'm backing up to get the boss on the edge because I don't want a player to, I don't want to be in the center of the ads. No melee really wants to be in the center of the ads because that's where the players are going to be running. And later in the fight, you're going to actually see why that was a problem is because I think our warrior dies to that. So Curse of Stone comes out. I actually decurse myself here. I move in. And then this is a nice little play. So if you pay attention to his cast, when it's less than a second, you can actually cast a Door of Shadows out of the circle here. And then while he's in the air, it's going to port me, and I'm going to avoid taking the damage. So that's a nice little thing that um, Venthyr bears specifically can do, or just Venthyr players. Just make sure you're not porting too early, because then you'll miss all the adds, and you'll probably wipe the group, especially in like a hierarchy like this. So yeah. And now he's going to just do, he's going to go back and do a Stone Call, and then after these adds come out, there's going to be another Blood Torrent. So here comes the stone call now, and then we're going to see the blood torrent come as well. So unfortunately, the bait was kind of bad. We ideally would want some of like our range to be back here, uh, and then our melee want to be obviously on the boss. So one ad is left out. We kick it. We bring it in. I pot. I have incarn up, and we're just going to town. So I think I end up decursing myself here. No, I don't. Who did I decurse? I didn't curse no one. Never mind. Incarn's too important. <laughs> um... The ads die pretty easily. Our, what what happened there? I wanna just double check. So Crystal Stone comes out, it's on our lock. So what he's doing is he's Night Fang in, and then as soon as it goes off, he is then porting back to his Demonic Circle. So another really efficient use of that Demonic Circle puts him back in a location where he won't be hitting ads. And then as soon as that ends, another Blood Torrent is gonna come out. So you have a little bit of downtime. So this is what I'm talking about. These Blood Torrents are really bad. Um, these, these baits back here were fine. Uh, this is creating a lot of kind of bad space because you can see like there's tiny gaps in between them, but that means it's taking up more of a general area. So moving through here is a little bit more dangerous. So there's an overlap right here. There's a little bit of room to get through here and here, uh, but it's, it's, it's minimal at best. So ideally we would kind of like clump all the pools up here and leave this area open. So as you can see, it kind of like loads up a bunch of mechanics at the same time. So here we're gonna get the Curse of Stone again. There's no adds up currently. So uh, I'm gonna just move out. I can use dash here, but I have had issues where dash just like is barely not enough and I've been clipped by it. So I'm a bad player. I'm not good at this game. So I will typically get hit by this. So what I did here is I pop survival instincts and I'm just going to take the debuff. It's not super dangerous because of how often this uh, boss kind of spell cues. We're going to just roll some frenzied regen stacks. I have bark skin up still. Adds are spawning here. Um, we're not we're not hitting them with any abilities until they get into melee. And then we're we're identifying which ad is a little bit further out. We're targeting it. We're going to get the skull bash here to drag it in. And then we're looking really clean. So this is the point where this defensive was popped a little too late and our warrior ends up perishing because of the adds uh, exploding. So he activated it as he died. So just like a general note, use your defensives before the damage comes out. This is a pretty good blood torrent bait. 
Blood, blood torn pools will eventually disappear as you see the very first one in the fight disappeared, but again, they last for like two and a half minutes. Leap is on our warrior again. He gets decursed. I see that our marksman hunter has true shadow aura up for a few more seconds, so I decurse him so he can continue doing his little damage. Volcron, once again, our warrior, he leaps out to avoid taking that damage and charges back in. Blood torn bait, very good by our hunter there off on the uh, next to these old pools. So we're keeping this area clean in the center now. So you can see where I'm position positioning for baits. Right next to the old pool, Volcron should be probably on this side as well. And then our last ad set. So this ad set, we identify that this is our fourth ad set or fifth ad set. We have minimal CDs, but in Discord, we are talking about what like super minor things can we do. So our Warlock was actually lining up um, a pretty massive, I think, implosion, which ends up carrying it here. So the ads are a little spread because of this Blood Torrent bait, which was bad. I think it was on our Warrior there, or, or maybe it was on our Druid. We're trying to figure out which ads are further away uh, to try to kick them, but it's just not looking like it's working all that well. And then here, <laughs> here's the reason why you don't want the boss in the ad. So it's partly my fault, partly our warrior's fault for trying to like kind of zug here is that our warrior stayed in he tr to try to kill the ads he got stunned we had to run in for the leap to try to kill some of the ads which we killed four which is good uh but our warrior died because he was in the leap so if you can as a melee you want to back away from the boss it's more important to not die because being dead on this fight luckily we have seven percent left um being dead on this fight makes the fight so, so, so much harder because you have less CDs, less defensives. Um, you have a higher chance of a specific player being targeted with Stone Shattering Leap who might not be able to handle it. If you're playing with a Priest, for example, Priests have a little bit harder time dealing with that mechanic than a Warrior. You just want to be a little bit more careful. And then I think lastly, this is going to be a tunnel. This is a call to uh, Tunnel Echelon with 500k and not an ad set coming up for a few seconds. We're chilling. So Blood Torrent Bait, pretty good. It's out towards range. Um, again, these these Blood Torrent pools, like these, this is this is not great. Some of them were good. Some of our some of our baits were really good. Like this overlap right here, beautiful. This bait was okay. Uh, but some of these melee ones, melee, you want to be aware of your positioning, it's especially like stack with the tank or stack like next to an old uh, pool if you can. So we both went to the, both the healer and I dispelled our hunter to try to finish up the boss, and we did so. That's it. That's that's the breakdown. That was a four minute encounter on a 24. This was a couple weeks ago. If I remember correctly, I was probably like two, I think most of our group was like 271, 272 item level at this time. So a little low still, but uh, yeah. Hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope it was helpful. If you did like it, leave a like. It helps me out a lot. If you guys have any questions about this encounter, or anything specific you'd like other people to know leave it in the comments below would love to would love to have additional tips for this fight hope you're all staying happy healthy and i'll catch you all in the next one take care